Welcome to the Eddie on the Go YouTube channel. I'm Eddie V and this video is dedicated to all my people from Northern California, no matter where you are now. Many times over the past year as I've been planning this trip, I've been asked, why Panama? Well, I say, why not? You might say that the seed for this journey was planted during the height of the surreal events surrounding the Rona in 2020. I felt restless and weighed down. And it occurred to me that I hadn't been out of the country in 20 years. So I was practically salivating at the idea of making up for lost time. I decided to make an exit plan. Being a predominantly Hispanic heritage, I've always had an affinity for, and an interest in, all things Latin America. Maybe it started with the female foreign exchange student we had in high school. She was from Barranquilla, Colombia, and I've always had an interest in that country. They do have a lot of beautiful women there. Very nice people. But that wasn't the first country on my radar. The first countries I looked into were Argentina and Chile. Due to its economic situation, the U.S. dollar goes a long way in Argentina. The country is famous for its quality beef and good wines. Chile also produces good wines. God knows I've consumed many cases from each of those countries. On a whim, and because it seemed the logical thing to do, I googled, what is the population of Chile below the poverty line? Ooh, not good. 33%. Just as I was beginning to do research on Argentina, somehow Panama came to my attention. I became intrigued. Panama has used the U.S. dollar as their preferred unit of exchange since the year after Panama separated from Gran Colombia in 1903. You might get Panamanian Balboa coins in your change, but it's still worth a dollar. And major bonus, no exchange rate to deal with. Forget about bringing those Benjamins, there's no use for them there. Just bring 20s and below. The more I read, the more I was interested. Panama being a Latin American country with highlands, you know what that means. That's right, they grow coffee there. In Cherokee Province near Costa Rica. You know what else is in Cherokee Province? Lots of expats. In fact, the Boquete area is home to Panama's largest population of expats for the United States, Canada, Colombia, Venezuela, Europe, and other countries. Another interesting fact about Panama is that it's easy to find a climate to your liking based on elevation. By the coast, it's going to be hot and humid. In the highlands, daytime temperatures are in the low to mid 70s. Cooler temperatures the higher you go, and warmer as you go lower towards the coast. I won't get sidetracked here by talking about the rain and how they have two seasons in Panama, 
the rainy and the so-called dry seasons. But Panama being so close to the equator, nine degrees north to be exact, it's outside of the hurricane belt. Sold. I love rain and we never get enough rain in California. Plus the dirty air in the Central Valley gives me respiratory issues. So I'm totally down with rain. Sure, with rain comes humidity, but that's something I can learn to live with. After all, rain is the bringer of life and all things green. And where there's green, there's other life. Which brings me to the next selling point, the exotic wildlife. When I was a boy, I collected trading cards that came in cereal boxes. On these cards were pictures and information about all these different exotic animals from around the world. I was fascinated by these strange, often colorful, but interesting creatures. And some of those animals and birds from those cards just happened to inhabit Central and South America, including Panama. In fact, my first Airbnb after I arrive is in a house surrounded by local wildlife in a neighborhood just outside of Panama City near a huge 620 acre municipal rainforest park, which is both botanical gardens and zoo. The neighborhood is called Albrook. It once housed the families of U.S. Air Force officers stationed at the former Albrook Air Force Base during the construction of the Panama Canal. This is a neighborhood where humans coexist with wildlife, which includes a variety of native birds, including toucans, macaws, hummingbirds, and other colorful species. Did you know that 10% of the world's bird species live in Panama? Well, you do now. As for the ground and tree dwellers, the area is home to sloths, Cotamundi, or as the locals call them, Gato Solo, Aguti, and Capybara. Near the river, you will find caiman, a relative to the alligator, and howler monkeys. And that's only in this one area just outside the city. And there's a lot more than that elsewhere in the country. Imagine a country only slightly bigger than Ireland with 21 times more plant species per square kilometer than Brazil. Panama has vast tropical forests, 1500 islands, and incredible biodiversity, and is also home to a vast variety of landscapes. In the span of a week, you can hike through highland cloud forests and lush jungles, and also take a dip in both the Caribbean Sea and the Pacific Ocean. There's also a peak where after a hike on a clear day, you can see the Pacific to the south and the Caribbean to the north. It has mountains and jungle, it's got beaches. It has an amazing diversity of plants and wildlife. It's got coffee. It has chocolate. Oh, I didn't tell you about that yet. Well, I'll save that for its own episode, okay? So now you know the why. I've got some really special content coming your way. So subscribe to my channel and click the notification bell and YouTube will let you know when the next video drops. Until then, tranquilo amigos, I'll see you in the next video. Ciao, ciao.